Hi, my name is Mobin Karimi. I am an assistant professor at the Department of Microbiology and Immunology at Upstate Medical University at Syracuse, New York. A research in my lab is focused on the cell transduction pathway and that include T cells, B cells, and NK cells, ILCs. More specifically, we are interested in modulating signal transduction pathway downstream. And the readout of this we presented is a disease model could be graft versus host disease, graft versus tumor, and also autoimmune models, and you can apply to many, many different things. So we work as an upside-down pyramid. We're looking at the phenotype on the animal models, and then step down, we look at the cell function, and we're looking at the transcription factors, and we're looking at specific genes, and we can target to specific genes, and then see these genes are responsible for this phenotype. So we would like to think the, the paper that we submitted for Uncle Target and that we, we are very happy with them and we are surprised by many aspects of them because when we modulate uh, the chemokine receptors and the migration pathway, and we want to look at how these T cells will migrate to the inflamed tissues. For example, in a normal circumstances, these T cells might not migrate from one area to another if you modulate some of the chemokine receptors. So in this uh, manuscript, we looked at three different genes. One was uh, CRK1 as a part of CT10 regulatory kinase pathway. And uh, also we look at CRK1 knockout, CRK double knockout, which means that CRK and the ligand for CRK is also knocked out. And we also uh, specifically look for ligand. What, what happened if we lig knock out the ligand? So we saw in the in vitro and in vivo, we saw a little bit of difference in the migration. But that did not give us um, full uh, satisfaction because we wanted to test this in this disease models. So in this manuscript, what we did is we took a balsy and irradiated, gave them full body irradiations, and then did a major mismatch transplantation from B6 mice, which they genetically, they are different. So what happened is that the wild type cells were able to migrate from secondary lymphoid organs to liver and small intestine and skin, which are the GBHD target organs. But the mice with the CRK double knockout and CRK ligand knockout were unable to migrate to GBHD target organ. What happened is when we irradiate mice, balsy mice, and those mice produce cytokines and they're inflamed tissue, so the donor T cells will come and they will migrate to those inflamed tissue and they generate severe damage. And trafficking is now, uh, donor T cells trafficking is now one of the hallmark of GBHD. So we were so surprised that we did an allo mismatch, allogenic T cells, they were unable to travel to the GBHD target organ. And we can only see up to, we quantify those. And quantification data suggested only 10% of the cells will be able to migrate versus in the wild type, they were like 90%, 80%. So that was significant for us. So when we checked uh, with this mice, we'll develop graft versus host disease. Since the migration was defective significantly, the host mice did not develop graft versus host disease. And then we check with a clear tumor. So the next experiment what we did is we give them, we radiate them, we establish the allo mismatch uh, transplant model, and we also give them B cell leukemia. And we were so surprised that this donor T cells, either from the wild type or from the knockout, they were both able to clear the tumor in the periphery, but they did not cause GBHD. So uh, we wanted to see what will be the limitation of this model. So the limitation of this model is to check is where we establish GBHD, but instead of giving them IV tumor, we give them IP tumor under the skin and see if the donor cells can migrate under the skin and can clear the tumor. So in a wild type models, the donor T cells were able to go to secondary lymphoid organs, go to liver, small intestine, also to tumor under the skin, and they were able to clear the clear it. But when we look at the crack knockout and crack L knockout, or the double knockout, uh, they were unable to go to the tumor where you put it under the skin. So in the hematological malignancies, and since everything takes place in the periphery, so it would be a good model to use. But for the solid tumor, this might not be a useful tool. So we looked at both, whether it can be applied to hematological malignancy or whether it can be applied to solid tumors. So in our lab, we wanted to research, look at all aspects of the models. We wanted to look at um, the limitation of it, how, how much we can 
push this to make it a better model. And this data show that in hematological malignancy, uh, donor T cells have a defect in the migration and uh, they cannot go to GVHD target organ, um, but they can clear the tumor in the periphery and they do not cause GVHD. So as far as graft versus host disease, it will be a great model. Our collaborators and other people are working to make this as a small molecule and they can inhibit this. And hopefully we can start soon in the clinical model uh, to move it from the bench side to the bed. And uh, we will also check this and see what specific pathway is disrupted in the mice and what specific other pathway is disrupted in the human as well. So at this point, we are satisfied with our in vivo mice model, but we wanted to test this also in the human models and see if there is any similar effect that we see in the migration. And, and if that's a true, hopefully the small molecule would be an ideal candidate for hematological malignancy and also for graft versus host disease because graft versus host disease is one of the diseases, but there are many diseases involved that cause autoimmunity, primarily by T cells. And if you can inhibit T cells migrations to inflame tissue, that might be used for other diseases like arthritis, other uh, autoimmune models. And so really excited about this, and we are hoping that we can move this forward as far as we can get. So other projects in my lab is we studied IKK signaling. We have recently developed a small inhibitors, and when we looked at uh, in a mouse models that if you inhibit ITK signaling and upregulate some of the molecules that are responsible for the cytotoxic function, but it inhibits cytokine productions and chemokine receptor upregulation. So in the lab recently, we are moving this to how that will affect patient samples that patients who develop GVHD or have autoimmune disease where their T cells are inflamed. How can we find out how which one will be a better model? And second model that we are using this ITK model for is there are a lot of drugs available to inhibit the BTK, but BTK drugs are not specific. So we made it a very specific inhibitors and we can use both the ITK and BTK inhibitors simultaneously. In one hand, you can inhibit tumor growth, and another one, you can proliferate or expand T cells uh, that will produce less cytokine and will be less exhausted and can be more effective. So we are really excited about this work. Since we published our paper in uh, Oncotarget, we have two other papers coming out, one in frontier immunology and another is in science immunology, and we hope we can grow it and make it a much better successful model. With this, I would like to thank again uh, the people in Oncotarget, and anybody who wants to collaborate with us, wants to look at this work, please contact us. Please uh, let us know that your opinion, whether it's negative, positive, and we as scientists, we are open to any criticism any positive impact so we can improve the life of people. With that, thank you very much.